Sometimes you may need to draw the robot in your sci-fi team artwork, but you are not usually draw it. In this tutorial, I will show you the very easy way to design a humanoid robot and draw it with Cube Studio Ruler tools. It's very easy and fun. Let's start with the basic concept. The humanoid robot is a robot that has a frame like a human body. Its main composite are body parts and joints. When turning it to robot parts, draw it as boxes. By adjusting the box size, you can easily decide the robot scale. For example, if you want the robot to look very strong, draw the big chest and big arms to smack the enemy or carry the weapon. Or thinner robot to work in laboratory or bigger head robot to contain a lot of information. You can also adjust parts and joint position to create a more unique style. You have to give more attention to the robot movement when reducing some joints. For example, the robot can't walk correctly if you remove its knee. You may add some wheel or power engine to allow it to move. Mainly the robot parts are solid shell that cover the mechanical inside. So its shape can be whatever you feel like to fit your design, such as box or cylinder. You can also put the parts without the shell, but instead with a skeleton structure. For the joint, find some reference to mechanical joints to design your own. Here are some examples. In some parts, such as spine, it may need continuous joint parts or covering for protection, such as shoulder or elbows. There is also limitation to the movement of each joint. The more realistic you make the joint, the more realistic your robot will be. Let's start from designing the parts. Plan the robot body figure and add some simple joints. Usually, the robot body is symmetrical for the balance in movements. But you can also decide a non symmetrical robot too. It's no stick rule on that. Use symmetrical ruler to draw the details. Select symmetrical ruler in the ruler sub tool. Then adjust number of line to 2 and have the line symmetrical checked. Hold shift button and drag the line in the middle of the body of the robot. It will be perfectly vertical aligned to the image. Create new layer for the design. If the symmetrical ruler is not shown in all layer, check the option in layer panel. Now you can draw on one side and it will be appear on both sides. I use simple pen for sketching. Start by drawing the rough shape, then apply the detail after. The eraser tool will work only on one side of the symmetrical ruler. If you want to erase on both sides, pick the transparent color and paint it with your current brush. You can also draw the side view of your robot for more clearer on design. If you are always messing with the perspective, learning how to use the perspective ruler is very useful. However, you also need to learn some basic of how perspective take effect in the drawing. It's just like looking an object in a box. When you drag the project line from the box, it will have vanished point somewhere. This is the most easy way to find the perspective of the object. You can give it a try on any image of some object. Take a photo with your phone and practice. To use the perspective ruler, select the perspective ruler. Make sure the mode is at vanish point. Then drag the ruler at one side of the box. And drag another line to commit the perspective ruler. Clip Studio will automatically add the horizon line. And there, you have the first vanish point. Repeat the step to add another vanish point. And the perspective ruler is ready. Simplify the design with basic shapes. Then place it on the canvas with perspective ruler. Make the free transform, control, shift, T. Set the mode to free transform. 
and move the corner of the transform box to fit the ruler. Create a new vector layer for box sketching. I recommend using the fill-in mono pen to draw the box because it will give the pen no pressure as if you are drawing a blueprint. I love to start with the feet because it's simply attached to the ground. Draw the box for the feet. In eraser property, enable the vector eraser to clean the unwanted lines. Project the line from reference and create the box for another path. Always clean up the unwanted lines to avoid confusion. Use separate color to avoid confusion too. We use the box for reference, so it don't have to be perfect, just easy to understand the position. When the box structure is ready, disable the snap to ruler and draw the path in the reference box. This will make it easy to manage the perspective of the robot. Also, use the different color to avoid confusion. When the sketching is done, merge the layer, lock the transparent, and you can just fill the color to change the color of the sketch line. For the ink process, I simply draw with the Bezier Curve tool. You can find the tool in Figure Sub 2. Create a new vector layer and draw it on the sketch we made. The basic control for Bezier Curve tool is click to make a corner node. Click hold and drag to make a curve, and double click to stop the line. You can learn more about Bezier Curve 2 in my previous tutorial, the link is in video description. There will be some parts that show the thickness, make sure you also draw those. Always clean up the line to avoid confusion. You can also simply edit the line by using the control point tool. It's useful to edit the parallel curve for part thickness. Coloring the mechanical part is easy. Imagine how the box takes effect with the light. Create a luster layer below the ink vector layer for the shadow. Draw the line for shading with gray color. Use the box for reference. Then fill the color with fill tool. Also add shadow to the part that overlap. You can also change the ink color with object 2. To fill the best color, set the ink vector layer to reference layer. And on the fill 2, set the refer multiple to reference layer and fill the color.
When you finish filling the color, change the layer blending mode of shadow layer to linear burn will give you the very easy shadow effect. There will be some part that appear under the robot shell, fill it with a darker shade of past color. Use the burr tool to soften the shadow border on some parts. You can also paint additional shadow with the same gray color used in the shadow layer. Put all the color layer into one folder for easy to finish. Clipping the shadow layer with the color folder will allow it to show on color area only. For the highlight, create a new clipping layer to the part color layer. And paint the lighter color with soft airbrush. On some pointy corner, erase some color and use the burr tool to create the pointy effect. To give a metallic look on some part, add some both highlight at the most pointy area. For final touch with the color, create a new layer above the ink vector layer and apply the highlight to the border with a pencil tool. For easily highlight the edge area, hold shift button to drag the straight line. Also, give some highlight to the top edge of thickness. Highlighting in area will give a shinier look. And the color is done. We may add some details to enchant the robot look, such as painting, some dirt, and light. You can type the code or import some logo to apply on robot. If you type it, rust the light layer. Use the free transform to adjust to the surface. To create the ruin paint, Paint the transparency with the texture airbrush. For the dirt effect, use the texture airbrush. Use the layer blending mode to make it look applied to the skin and blend with virtue. For the spotlight effect, use the color burn mode for the first layer of effect. Then paint again in another layer with add glow mode. You can also add some scratching with texture pen and texture airbrush. And now your robot is ready to add to your scene. If you like my content, please subscribe my channel. Have a good day.